guys so excuse the mess I've had quite a week I gotta work on a reach in the line is kink the suction line so we're gonna do that uh, right now I'm gonna recover what it has fix the kink and replace the dryer while we're in there Let's see if I have the original Oh yeah. Yeah, it takes a small dryer. Someone had put a 083S, but I'm gonna go with the original. Just a small dryer. That way I know the charge is right on the nameplate. Because you can put bigger dryers, but you have to accommodate for the for that on the charge so we're gonna do that it should be quick and simple I had a had looked like a dirty condenser or high head or something but it turned out to be a restriction found the kink I'm gonna use a trusty cart I can use my analogs again I'm gonna take this all in one go. Torch, vacuum, recovery, just need the tank. Alright, so I'm gonna, I cut this out, 
see if I can fit this in there to swage what I have left since it's rolled up. Like I got slack, you know, when you pull it out, it's, it's just a roll of copper. Um, I tried to pull it so I could have it still connect with this out and just, you know, swage and solder together. We'll see if that works. If not, I'll, I'll use an elbow. Uh, I should have some. Pretty, but it works. Nothing's touching. Cool it down with oxygen. These two are shiny in a tight kitchen. No cords, pulling through the manifold. So I'm in my van. I do have a Bluetooth micron gauge, but on this simple setup, we're going to use the gauges and I can monitor it from here. So once it gets under a thousand, we'll see how close we can get. Our ultimate goal is always 500 or under, and we'll see. It's a small system, but I don't want to be here all day. I'm using my gauges it's gonna take it's gonna struggle a little bit uh, so I just got to do my paperwork and see where we're at
it so you've got that little reach in cooler with the make line it's a make line they call it and it has a bottom cabinet that was a 37 the top rail just gets frost like you saw and it's basically because it's like a i guess you'd call it static or static cooling uh, there's no fans so it's just like a nice chest with a frosted wall basically they have to keep it closed i've already told them that that's uh one of the main issues is they love to leave it open all day and it's not meant for that it's meant to get what you need and then close it when you're not busy um but now i gotta walk in to check uh pesky little walk-in uh, freezer that's been working for the most part but it was always like seven or eight degrees instead of like zero they didn't really want us to mess with it now it's at 20 degrees 22 degrees and someone else went out there and they said it has enough refrigerant and the pressures look decent there's nothing like super obvious so I'll have to gauge up and check superheat and all of that. Uh, check our airflow, expansion valve if it's set right. Uh, it's probably just gonna be like adjustments and stuff. All right, so I also have two ACs down uh, from what it looks like. I've got a restaurant that's 80 degrees or 83 degrees. So we'll go check those out. All right, we're here checking the ACs. The sun is intense today. It is a hot one. But uh, I was here like a month or two ago and I already washed them. I know they're clean and stuff. Supply temperature wasn't horrible. So I'm gonna see what's obvious, what's going on. I know they're running. But it's like 82 downstairs. Alright, I'm gonna undo this, but I can already see a crap load of water. So I need to see if there's like an airflow problem or something going on. Shouldn't be anything too serious. Got some loose belt action on them. Uh, I'll probably just adjust them for now. And then, uh, up there filter needs to be cleaned out and they just changed the filters downstairs too so it was probably just an airflow issue because everything's running fine uh, after I make my adjustments I'll just check my supply and return to be sure and hopefully that's it I got another call to get to So on those ACs, I also noticed that they changed the filters right before I got there. So uh, more than likely just airflow issues. All the compressors were working. All the temperatures looked pretty good. Uh, my return is gonna be a little bit high because they have a high heat load right now. Uh, it's a fast food place, so they have those floor to ceiling uh, windows in the front. Uh, and they don't use curtains. At least this location doesn't. So there's a lot of heat there. And it does cool, cause I was here like a month ago or so and it uh, was doing really well. Uh, the belt just got loose on both units. And that makeup area was pretty dirty. But yeah, big windows, high heat load, uh, very busy kitchen with a big pizza oven. So uh, everything else checked out fine. And I gotta do some more calls.
right, so I have to step out for a break. There is a dude hurling inside for like five straight minutes. It sounded horrible, I had to get out. And then I tried to go back in while I was washing the top to make sure that wasn't my issue. Uh, it wasn't that dirty. Uh, it looked like it was really dusty at the most. So I'm checking my sub cooling again because it was really low. But my head pressure was kind of high but it's really, really hot today. So maybe we are undercharged. And then I went back in and next to the freezer I'm working at, someone's in the walk-in cooler yelling like crazy, like a madman. So I'm gonna take a break. Yeah, uh, I can't do too much until they fix that door. And I'm just gonna recommend them a new door because that thing is, is pretty warped. And I've told them before, but you know, then the winter comes up and they don't have that issue because they really only have it when it's super hot. And right now, like today, it's extremely hot. Uh, it doesn't feel or like show in the weather, but in the sun, it's, it's pretty bad. And it's been like that before, but then like they'll get these uh, heat waves where they call it in and we'll come out and tell them what it is. But like by the time we get here, they tell us like, oh, it, was, it wasn't working the other day, but now it's working. Like it's because it was super hot that one day or whatever. And then they're missing a tile. So you got all that uh, attic heat in that area that doesn't have a lot of uh, air conditioning to begin with. It's a back door. And also the roof hatch is there. So there's like heat from everywhere coming, coming in and the, that freezer door is not gonna do any good like that. So is that really what tells you that the tank is empty? That's the only, that's only the second tank that has done that to me. So sub cooling stayed pretty low. I didn't have much refrigerant to put in it and I was supposed to stock up today but it's been real busy i'm also over the phone troubleshooting because we got guys in uh at a walk-in two hours away so i'm trying to help them out too but yeah we'll see i'll get back to it it's working but it still needs a little bit because it's also on the back of the evaporator after i got my super heat up because it was very low also uh, my frost pattern was like stopping halfway on the evaporator. So that's another like low charge indicator plus a low sub cooling. So I'll try that tomorrow. 